Hi, in this video I talk about the anatomy of the inguinal canal which is uh, an important structure located within the abdominal wall and uh, it is uh, a tunnel of some sort which uh, acts uh, during embryological development in the male to allow the testes to descend into the scrotal sac. So the inguinal canal is a passage in the caudal abdominal wall which is uh, filled with uh, connective tissue. Normally it's filled with connective tissue. So it is located between the abdominal muscles and uh, their aponeurosis. In the other video we saw what muscles are called abdominal muscles and we had a look at uh, their various uh, attributes as well as the uh, anatomical descriptions. So in the male animal, the inguinal canal serves as the, the passageway for the vaginal process and also for the descent of uh, the testes. It is of uh, clinical significance in that uh, this particular canal can be a point of uh, weakness in the abdominal wall and uh, this can uh, result uh, in to it being a common site of herniations. So in this uh, tutorial video, I provide some literature on the anatomy of the inguinal canal of uh, animals. After going through this tutorial video on the inguinal canal, you'll be able to define the inguinal canal. You'll also be able to visualize and explain the beginning and uh, the end points of the canal. You will also be able to name the anatomical structures that are contained within the male inguinal canal as well as the female inguinal canal. You will also be able to define the deep and superficial inguinal rings. Also, you will be able to explain the embryological development of uh, the inguinal canal. So, what is the inguinal canal? In animals, uh, the term inguinal canal, or sometimes just referred to as a space, is applied to an oblique passage uh, through the caudal part of the abdominal wall. So the paired canals lie on either side of uh, the prepubic tendon, and the prepubic tendon is a, a strong, thick fibrous structure that attaches to the cranial border of the pubis, and uh, it uh, provides the attachment for very important muscles such as uh, the rectus abdominis muscle and also the abdominal oblique muscles, that's the external abdominal oblique and also the internal abdominal oblique and also it provides attachment for other muscles like the gracilis and the, the pectineus muscle The inguinal canal has uh, two openings There is uh, a deep opening in the abdominal region and also a superficial opening The superficial opening in the male is the one that leads uh, into the scrotal sac so the canal begins at uh, the deep inguinal ring and uh, it extends obliquely ventromedially to end at uh, the superficial inguinal ring. Now the term inguinal ring is uh, somewhat uh, misleading because uh, these uh, openings or what uh, are often referred to as the rings are not really rings but uh, just slit like structures. So they are not uh, really circular but uh, just slit like structures. The term canal is also misleading since uh, it is merely a potential space between the muscles and fascia. In fact, you will find that uh, the, the, the canal is uh, filled up uh, with uh, connective tissue. So the inguinal canal holds uh, or transmits uh, very important anatomical structures, mainly those structures that are related to the reproductive system or the reproductive organs of uh, the male animal. So now, in the male, this uh, slit-like passage or space uh, between the abdominal muscles contains quite a number of structures, which include the following. There is uh, the spermatic cord, and uh, the spermatic cord is just uh, a paired uh, structure whose main function is uh, to suspend or hold the testes inside the scrotum. And uh, it consists of uh, structures uh, that allow the testes to function normally. So it contains uh, some of the structures such as uh, the ductus deferens, the testicular artery, and uh, the testicular vein. Also, it uh, contains uh, you know, some uh, lymphatic vessels as well as uh, connective tissue. So that's one important structure that is contained within the inguinal canal. Another structure that is contained uh, within the inguinal canal of the male is, of course, uh, the vaginal tunic. Uh, this one is also known as uh, the tunica vaginalis and uh, it is just a pouch of uh, serous uh, membrane within the scrotum 
and uh, it lines the testis and uh, the epididymis so there is uh, a visceral vaginal tunic and also a, a parietal vaginal tunic then uh, another structure that is contained in the male inguinal canal would be the cremaster muscle and uh, this muscle is uh, this is uh, the muscle of uh, the spermatic cord and it functions in uh, raising the testis closer to the body especially when the external temperature is low in order to ensure that uh, spermatogenesis takes place normally then the other structure is of course uh, known as uh, the external pudendo artery this is another structure that is contained within the inguinal canal of the male so the external pudendo artery is a, a collateral branch of uh, the common femoral artery which is uh, so the, the external pudendo artery is actually the main or the primary blood supply to the penis and uh, clitoris so it be it has to pass through the inguinal canal before it goes to supply the the, the penis then the other structure that is found within the inguinal canal would of course be just the inguinal lymph blood, lymph vessels and uh, of course uh, some important uh, nerves such as the the ileo inguinal nerve and also the genital femoral nerve so these uh, nerves would be going to supply the testicular tissue itself including uh, some of the tissues that are found uh, on the scrotum so those are the important structures that are contained uh, within the male inguinal canal Uh, the female inguinal canal only contains uh, a few structures as compared uh, to the male animal so these structures that are contained within the female inguinal canal are the external pudendo vessels uh, that includes the arteries and the veins and also the ileo inguinal nerve as well as uh, the genital femoral nerve so the main structures that are contained in the female inguinal canal are just three that is the external pudendo vessels, the ileo inguinal nerve, and also the genital femoral nerve. So, as was mentioned earlier, the inguinal canal has two openings. There is a deep opening and a superficial opening, which are referred to as the inguinal rings. So, the deep uh, inguinal ring is uh, the abdominal opening of the inguinal canal and uh, the deep inguinal ring has uh, a length of about 15 centimeters in the bull and uh, approximately about 2.5 centimeters in the male goat or the back the superficial inguinal ring is a well-defined slit in the aponeurosis of uh, the external abdominal oblique muscle lateral to the prepubic tendon so this is the opening that leads into the scrotal sac in the male animal I will now talk uh, briefly about uh, the development of the inguinal canal in the male animals. So the inguinal canal in uh, male animals develops at the time of uh, descent or descending of the testes. So during uh, embryological development, normally the testicles will be found uh, within the abdominal cavity and uh, they have to, to descend from the abdominal cavity and go and lodge into the scrotal sac as the embryo or the fetus uh, advances in its uh, development so the testes in the male animals develop in the dorsal abdominal wall and uh, three chemicals uh, or hormones are normally involved in stimulating the testes to descend from the abdominal cavity and to go and lodge into the scrotal sac or the scrotum and uh, these hormones uh, are normally follicle stimulating hormone or fsh testosterone and another hormone known as the mullerian hormone so these would interact and then ensure that the testicles descend from the abdominal cavity and go and lodge into the scrotal sac so the path taken by the testes during the descent of uh, the testes into the scrotal sac is what eventually is going to define the future adult inguinal canal so the path that the testis takes from uh, the point where it is situated in the embryo in the abdominal cavity up to the point where it gets lodged into the scrotal sac there is normally a canal that is defined but it eventually collapses and then it pulls the testis as it is descending also pulls these other structures uh, for example the blood vessels the nerves and also the lymphatics together with it and uh, these structures end up being lodged within the inguinal canal so that's how the inguinal canal is de defined during embryological development
So you have now come to the end of this uh, short uh, tutorial video on the anatomy of uh, the inguinal canal in animals. So therefore, you should be able to define the inguinal canal. Also, you should be able to visualize and explain the beginning and end points of the inguinal canal in animals. You should also be able to name the anatomical structures that are contained in the male inguinal canal as well as the female inguinal canal. Also, you should be able to define the deep and superficial inguinal rings. And uh, finally, you should be able to briefly explain the embryological development of the inguinal canal. Thank you for watching and uh, listening.